good morning. Friday morning, going on 7.15 a.m., April 29th, 2022, on the East Coast of the United States. And this morning, I'm going to make myself just a nice cup of coffee because um, I was going to tell you a little bit more about how coffee gets from the plantation to your cup. So everybody has probably read about different coffees. It says like, this coffee was wet processed or dry processed or honey processed or wet and dry uh, or semi-dry, all kinds of different terms, okay? Basically what has to happen, you know, I'll get my milk frothing while I'm talking here. <clears throat> What has to happen is that when that coffee fruit is picked from the tree, it's got pulp around it, okay? And that pulp has to be removed. Um, and then, you know, before you get to the two coffee beans, if there's only one bean in it, it's called a pea berry. Um, normally there's two, although there are certain coffee plants that just grow ones with one anyhow. So you've got to get that the pulp off of the beans, okay? It's kind of like if you were collecting, um, if you were going to grow avocado seeds, you'd want to get the skin and the fruit off of the avocado. So you're just left with that big round seed, okay? Um, so There's different ways of getting the pulp off of the coffee. And what I wanted to talk about was fermentation. Okay, because this is involved with getting that pulp off of the coffee. Now, okay, when you eat bread or drink wine or beer, you are eating or drinking the product of fermentation. Um, but co fermented coffee, you're not actually fermenting the coffee and making um, a food or a drink that's like bread or wine or beer, okay? Fermentation is happening in that pulp around the coffee bean after it's, well, sometimes it starts on the coffee plant, but um, it definitely starts after those beans have been picked. Oh, here, my milk is ready. Okay, those of you that, that follow me know that I should probably just do one thing at a time. And whoops, and here I am talking and See, I already forgot to put in one of the ingredients I was going to use this morning. Oh, dear. Let me do this, and then I will go on about fermentation. Okay? So, with my nice froth. Okie dokie. I was going to put some of this <clears throat> Walden Farms zero-calorie chocolate syrup in here. And then, so I was going to mix that up with my milk. But what I'll do is, I don't know. Here, I don't even have my water heated up. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, and I'm thinking about the snake outside. Yeah, the snake is still out there. It came out this morning um, to catch itself, I guess, some bugs or lizards or something. Anyhow, yeah, I showed you the snake yesterday. I'll show you again real quick right now, and maybe I can gather my thoughts here about fermentation. But, um, the fermentation of the pulp is actually when microorganisms are interacting with that pulp around, go out here, around those coffee beans and kind of breaking it down. Okay, let me turn the camera around. Okay, so here is Sneaky Snake. It's, it's real hard to focus on 
this is the best I can do. See, it's not really big. See my finger and the snake. It's a very skinny snake. There's its tail hanging off. Uh, I don't know why, but when I use the camera on Facebook, it's not letting me focus. Okay, anyhow. So, I've got that snake living out, see, in my bird feeder area, because there's lots of bugs and lizards out here. No, it's, I have not observed it eating any birds. Uh, I don't think I have a bird that's small enough. Oh, maybe it could eat a Carolina chickadee, but it would have to catch it first. I think the bird knows to stay away from the snake. Anyhow, so the pulp around, the skin and the pulp around those beans is being acted upon by yeasts and bacteria that occur naturally in the environment and on the plant and starts to break stuff down. It also forms various compounds. This is ristretto that I'm making. Um, it's one of the Inspirazione Italiana coffees. And the stuff that happens not only helps perform a mechanical or physical process of helping to get that pulp off of the bean, or the beans, but also it is creating various compounds that will affect the flavor of the coffee. Now, in some areas of the world, it's very humid and moist where coffee is grown, and then there are much drier areas where coffee is grown. So that will determine if they're gonna use wet or dry fermentation. Um, in wet fermentation, the uh, tremendous amount of water is used to wash all that pulp off of the coffee beans, and then they have to dry also. Uh, in dry fermentation, they're let to sit out in the sun. And anyway, there actually is a meter that they use when the coffee beans are on the trees um, to determine how much uh, sugar is present in the coffee fruit uh, to help determine if it's ready to be picked or, uh, you know, whether by hand or machine. And then also, they use a little machine to determine how dry the coffee bean has gotten after it's gone through fermentation or processing. You know, part of the problem with this, this was part of my problem when I was reading about this. Let me taste my coffee. Mm, mm. Delicious. Mm. Okay. Part of the problem is that, okay, Processing can mean the mechanical processing, um, you know, what actually is done physically with the coffee. It can also mean the same thing as fermentation, which is the process by which that pulp is removed. But in so doing, it also forms, it has an effect on the coffee beans and can change the flavor of them. Um, anyhow, there's also, oh, to make things even more complicated, these days people also make fermented coffee, which is they uh, brew, sort of like brew coffee from the coffee beans and, or mash them all up, you know, and soak them and heat them and everything, and then they ferment that to make it into an alcoholic beverage. Anyway, so there are terms that are used that the same terms that can mean different things. So processing can mean the fermentation. Processing can mean 
um, whether it's uh, washed in water to get the pulp off or set out in the sun to dry or how then the coffee beans are handled after that um, and fermentation. Well, you know, we talked about, well, anyway, you know, I, we're not making an alcoholic beverage here with our coffee, okay? So put that out of your mind. <laughs> It's very confusing. I, I even read a scientific, uh, an article from a scientific journal about fermentation in uh, the processing of coffee. In other words, how they get that pulp off. There's also like a parchment kind of thing around the beans. So there's the skin, there's the pulp, which is like the fruit. And then there's a layer of, um, I guess a skin sort of around the coffee beans, kind of like you find, um, you know, in many fruits, uh, which is sort of like, well, like a papery coating or a little extra skin that's around the seed. So they got to get all that off um, before they can start roasting the coffee so that eventually we can brew it, you know, and get something that we can drink. I don't know. If this was confusing to you, it was confusing to me. I mean, I read so many different articles, I watched videos, and basically what I came out of with the whole thing is that when you're looking for a certain type of coffee, um, you know, like sometimes you'll find people that say, oh, well, I only drink Costa Rican coffee or, oh, no, I prefer Indonesian coffee or, you know, I like Colombian coffee, things like that. Well, those places have different climates. There's even different microorganisms that live in those places because of the climates. Some of those places, um, you know, are like high altitude, or maybe there's low altitude, maybe there's a lot of wind or sun or rain. All of that affects the end product, okay? There's so many variations, so many different things that can affect coffee. So you might wanna pay attention to what kind of coffee do you like? You know. If you, you like a certain coffee, read about where did it come from? How was it processed? How was it roasted? Oh my goodness. You know, you may discover that indeed there are certain coffees uh, from certain areas of the world that you prefer over others. And it's kind of interesting, isn't it? So even though what I shared was kind of confusing because I'm still somewhat confused because of all the, the various ways there are to get that bean from the tree to the point where it's gonna be roasted. Um, so, you know, I'm confused, maybe you're confused. The point is though, there's a lot of different ways that it can happen and maybe your taste buds actually prefer a certain way. You know, I have not done this. I have not looked to see, um, you know, where does a coffee come from and do I like that coffee? Do I seem to prefer coffees from that region? Well, anyway, before my coffee gets cold, I'm gonna be quiet here and drink it. And I don't know, I, I hope that this has somehow advanced your knowledge a little bit or maybe it's just giving you time to make a nice cup of coffee while I've been nattering on here. Cheers.